So of course, the big headlining feature with iPadOS 26 was that brand new windowing and multitasking mode across all iPads. But if you have an M series iPad, you're able to then extend that monitor and have a true secondary display support and be able to have those windows floating around on that display to your heart's delight. And in that same vein, what I've been using is Satsu's Flip Action Series a portable monitor. And in my opinion, this is probably the best secondary portable monitor that money can buy. So let's talk about exactly what makes this thing so powerful and so unique. Let's talk about it. <laughs> First, to start off with the one that I have because there's three different flip action series Satsu monitors that are all 16 inches, but you just kind of step up as you go along. I have the Flip Action Pro, the Gen 1 version, because I've had this one for about a year now at this point and it's held up magically. And we'll talk about all the different specs that it has. You then have the 16 inch Flip Action Gen 2, which does give you a little bit more in terms of a little bit more brightness. You also get 120 hertz compared to 60 hertz on this one. And then finally, you have the Elite version, which is the most expensive one, which we'll touch on pricing at the very end which does have even more brightness, better contrast, and then overall it is a 4K display, while this one is a quad HD display. But to kind of give you guys a lowdown because they're all built pretty much the same in terms of the build quality, the build materials, and all the different functions that it has, you're just paying a little bit more for the better display and the newer display overall. But let's first talk about the design, the magnets, the modularity of it all because that's what really drew me to it. I saw a YouTube short about a year ago kind of highlighting this Satsu monitor and there really isn't much out there in terms of people actually reviewing it and giving their honest thoughts. So the first thing that drew me to it was the overall package because it comes in two pieces when you do open it up. It brings the actual stand itself which is magnetically attached to the rear and then the monitor itself as well and it's kind of this two part design. So in order to open this up, all you do is you pull off that stand itself, you open it up, and then you connect it to the rest of the stand, which is connected to the monitor, and that's going to be able to then power everything moving forward. It does also include a USB-C cable in the packaging, of course, to connect it. One side is an L shape, and one side is just a normal sided one, which does make it very easy to connect to the computer that you're using, whether it is an iPad or a MacBook, or even my Mac mini, because the way that I use it is I use it with my iPad Pro on the go, and then I use it as a secondary vertical monitor with my M4 Mac mini. Another thing that drew me to this was just the overall build quality material because it literally looks like a large iPad that's stuck onto a Pro Display XDR type of stand. It is made of anodized aluminum, so it does fit that Apple aesthetic beautifully. And this thing is ultra thin and compact. And again, it's made to be portable. So you're looking at about 0.5 inches for the ultra thin profile. It's 900 grams or about two pounds, 1.99 pounds for the display itself. And then another 435 grams for the base stand. So overall, you're dealing with a very lightweight package that can all fit together in a 16 inch the laptop case. And the, again, the design is just so unique because you're able to put it into so many different angles and viewing points, right? Of course, you have the stand itself, which you can push it forward, and it has a double hinge mechanism that is kind of re reminiscent of the Apple Magic Keyboard from a cantilever design standpoint. So you have the initial hinge, which is down at the bottom at the base to bring it closer to you, and then you have the secondary hinge at the top of it where the monitor is to then either bring it forward to you or tilt it down or whatever the case may be. The other thing is that it swivels a full 360 degrees. So you can have it vertically standing if you want one side, vertically standing the other side. And what's nice about it is that it does have an accelerometer built in here. So every single time you move it over, even when you are running something like iPad OS, it'll then turn off for a second, reorientate itself, and then you'll be good to go in terms of your viewing angles. The reason they have this double design here in terms of being able to adjust the height is because the idea here is to have the actual monitor sit on top of your MacBook or sit over your actual iPad Pro, we're now with the secondary display support. And that works magically because I've also seen people at WeWorks and co-working spaces where they like to have their secondary monitor live above their main monitor display, where it is usually a MacBook Air or a MacBook Pro because it's just better for ergonomics versus somebody just having it right next to it, either on the right or left-hand side of your MacBook. So now let's talk about this display itself. Like I said, this is gonna be the older one. This is about a year old now at this point. There is a Gen 2 version, and then of course the Elite version, but they're all 16 inches. This one is a 2560 by 1600 resolution. So it's about a 16 to 10 aspect ratio. You're getting 350 nits of brightness, which again, on paper isn't a ton, but when I put it side by side next to my 5K BenQ monitor, which is 400 nits, this actually seems brighter, and I'm not 100% sure why it feels and looks brighter, but 350 nits for this situation for me is more than enough. You have a 1200 to 1 contrast ratio, 100% of the DCI P3 color gamut, and like I said, this is a 60 hertz display. The Gen 2 does support the 120 hertz display, so if you want to game on it, you can do that as well. So of course, when you match this up with the 13 inch display of my M4 iPad Pro, it just unlocks a lot more usability, it gives you a lot more screen real estate, 
especially with the new floating windows. The beautiful thing about the new iPadOS 26 and the extended monitor support is that it scales amazingly no matter what external display you're using. Whether you're using a $50 12-inch display or you're using a $5,000, $6,000 Pro Display XDR at 6K, it will scale it perfectly, making it very easy to use no matter the monitor that you're using. So again, alongside the iPad Pro, it's great. And then with a MacBook Air or a MacBook Pro, it also works fantastically. And like I said, I use it with my Mac Mini a lot as a secondary vertical display that kind of flanks my BenQ monitor. And just like most portable monitors, this is a single cable solution that doesn't need its own power supply. So even with my iPad Pro, I'm able to plug it into that one USB-C port that it has, and I'm able to power the display itself with no problems whatsoever. Same thing goes with your MacBook because it only pulls 9.5 watts of power, and it also has power pass-through. So of course, there's a secondary USB-C port on the display stand where you can plug in, and then it'll power deliver to not only the monitor, but then also to your main computer or your host computer. And there's a nice little other cherry on top, depending on how you're gonna be using this thing. It does have an SD card reader on here built in as well. So if that's something that you take advantage of, now you know that that is built into it. So you don't have to worry about having a USB-C hub on the iPad. And then also it does support mini HDMI. So it has a mini HDMI port. If you have an HDMI cable to HD, mini HDMI, then it'll work alongside that as well. You don't need to use USB-C, but of course you will need to power it separately if you are using mini HDMI. So overall, this is one of the best monitors I've seen and for the price it better be. But before we get into the price, I do wanna mention some of the cons because I have been living with this thing for about a year now. The first thing, which I do think they improved on the Gen 2 version, is that I wish that the magnetic strength that when you do have it all folded up and kind of put together in the travel package, I wish the magnetic strength of the base where it attaches to the rear of the monitor was a little bit stronger. Because if you are just holding it and you're not really looking at what you're doing, the magnets, while they are strong enough for the most part, sometimes the actual sand will slide off, which again, it is a decently heavy package, so it will make a clanking sound if it hits the ground from a high distance. That's one thing that I do wish that they improve, but I do think it is improved on the Gen 2 model, so hopefully that is fixed. The second thing is that I do wish that they added a secondary data port if they were gonna add more USB-C ports, because again, especially if you are using it with your iPad Pro, the iPad Pro only has one data port that allows it to display out without using a USB-C dongle, so being able to have a secondary one, so for instance, I could have my SD card plugged in here, and then also maybe an SSD plugged in on the other side, that would have been fantastic to have, so I do wish that there was one more piece of I.O. Not really a problem if you're using this with a MacBook Pro or a MacBook Air or a Mac Mini, but as somebody who is an iPad Pro first user and uses this with their iPad Pro a lot, that is one thing that I do wish they were able to add on there. And then another thing that I do wish that they improved is going to be the strength of the hinges, and this could be a little bit at fault because they're trying to make it lightweight and kind of figure out that perfect balance between weight, balance, and then also making it feel sturdy, and it's going to be the, the flimsiness of it all. Again, if I just push it a little bit, it does shake. And again, if you are somebody who kind of bats their elbows on their desk and things like that, it will move a little bit. But the good thing to know here is that once you do set it up the first time, it doesn't really move too much. It's just a matter of when you are physically moving it, it jitters, it jitters around a little bit, but that's something to take note of, which I do think they improved on the Elite and the Pro Gen 2 version as well. So those are all things that, something that I, again, day by day learn to kind of live with, but I do wish the experience was just a little bit better overall when it comes to the build quality. But I do understand that they're kind of trying to teeter this balance between making it robust and heavy. So it does have that kind of stability, but then also this is a portable monitor first and foremost. So being able to keep it lightweight while also keeping the aluminum design is something that is at top of line for them when they're thinking about this. So now let's talk about the elephant in the room, which is gonna be price point, because these are not cheap monitors. You are paying for this cool design. You are paying for the portability and the high quality of it all. There are some monitors online that are, you know, 50 bucks, 100 bucks, 150, made out of plastic, will get the job done with just a regular kickstand, but they lack a lot of build quality and screen development and the display tech. So this one, which is going to be the Gen 1, they still sell it, I believe it's 499 on their website. They have an Arctic Blue version, which is I think 549. Then they have the Gen 2 version, which is 599. And the difference there, again, everything is exactly the same from the build quality to the build materials to the ports that it has. The only thing you're paying for is going to be the better display. It's still the same aspect ratio and the same, same quad HD display, but you're getting 120 Hertz, getting a little bit better contrast ratio of 1500 to one. And if anything, the Gen 2 is a little bit heavier too. So something to consider, but that one is 599. And then finally you have the Satsu Flip Action Elite, which is also 16 inches across, but this is a true 4K panel. It gives you 450 nits of brightness. It gives you the 60 Hertz refresh rate and it gives you that same contrast ratio that we had before. So the Elite, if you do want a 4K and you need the 4K, then that's gonna be your only option in this form factor. But if you're okay spending a little bit less money and getting the Quad HD display, and you're okay with it not being 120 Hertz, 
the Gen 1 that's still for sale for $499 or $549, I think is a good deal depending on how you're going to use it and how often you're going to use it and how important all the versatility and the movement of all that is worth it to you. But let me know in the comment down below. Is it worth it for a monitor to be this expensive? I know it's a little bit cost prohibitive, but in my opinion, it's definitely up there as kind of the best portable monitors from a quality standpoint, usability standpoint, versatility, and I'm just, I've been very happy with it. And I've been wanting to make this video because nowadays is I feel like it's getting harder and harder to just be overall impressed by a product that does something that's been around for a very long time. So shout out to Satsu for making such a unique product. Let me know in the comment down below what you think. I wanted to review this one. And let me know if you guys want to see some more kind of product centric reviews like this versus maybe those Apple software updates that we've been doing. Always curious to know what you guys are kind of watching these days, but that'll do for this video, everybody. If you did make it to the end, leave a little dolphin. I'll link these all down below for you guys to check out. Sato has no idea that I'm making this video. They're seeing this at the same time that you are. But if you guys want to watch more videos like this, check out one of these videos right here. Until next time, I'm Fernando. Peace, everyone.